Um, I'm very pleased that while sitting waiting for my slot in the uh, presentations that we have covered the topics of innovative building systems. I was a little bit nervous when preparing for this presentation because I realized that the Green Building Council of Namibia's um, topics would be more along um, energy efficiency and green buildings. And here we come along with an innovative building system. Um, initially, as I go through the presentation, um, the presentation will appear to be more along the lines of focusing on the innovation behind the building system. I think I can pass this slide. I think we can move on. Basically, I'd like to start what inspired the development of the KBB interlocking masonry block building system. The main purpose or the main inspiration behind designing the KBB innovative building system was primarily to reduce the cost of construction. And I hate to admit this, but as we get through the slides, we'll see that our mindset has developed. But when we, we put our heads together and actually when Mr. Schroeder, who is sitting in the audience, designed the KBB system, Kavanga Block Creek, better known as KBB, his whole mindset was, how can we make dignified, affordable housing accessible to people that are previously disadvantaged or could not afford housing? Whilst designing the system, it was also a very important consideration that the building system needs to have high social acceptance. And during the presentations uh, that have been put forward already, uh, when it comes to innovative building systems, especially in Southern Africa, um, social acceptance is always a big challenge. There are some fantastic innovative systems that are more affordable than conventional, more cost effective, fantastic um, energy efficiency um, properties, but the challenge is just getting it into the market. And I think we we covered on that earlier on with, um, when we were talking about other building systems. It's also very important that the building system, and for us, that it must be bankable. When designing the Kavanga Block Rick building system, it became very evident that you want financial institutions to be able to provide mortgages and also to um, be able to provide finance to the startup of, for example, our manufacturing plant that manufactures the blocks. So you need financial institutions to clap hands and stand behind you if you are developing an innovative building system. Just to give um, some, uh, basically a technical overview of what the KBB system is um, made up of, it's basically individual masonry blocks, um, very similar to Lego. For example, we have the main block, which makes up a large percentage of the building. We have the corner block that interlocks with the main block. And we also have a lintel block. Every five courses, we cast a bound beam with white end steel and 25 MPA concrete, which actually replaces um, Brick force, which is commonly used in the conventional industry, building industry. Um, in this, uh, apologies, the drawing isn't also isn't that great for the picture. Um, the block comprises of a tongue and a lip, so it interlocks into each other. Very similar to a Lego, a Lego type system. The underlying benefits of the KPB innovative building system in meeting objectives of going green waste not. These are the main uh, benefits that we have found during the construction process. Um, as we advance through the slides, I will, start, I will show the, um, the benefits for energy efficiency once the structure is occupied. We make use of a, a thin bed mortar system, which is basically a cement-based slurry that is used between the blocks. So it's not a dry stack system. Often people think it's a dry stack system, it isn't. Um, blocks are basically dipped and packed into a slurry mixture and then packed into place. Um, it's a very high 
straight um, slurry. Once it's dry, it's you, you, if you try and separate the blocks, it's almost impossible. We also make use of a three millimeter skin plaster product. And because the blocks um, interlock so perfectly together and the finish is so smooth, you only need a three millimeter plaster on the outside. In the Mibia, we do not need to use it, but where we built houses in the Western Cape, for example, with high uh, water penetration and con you know, the, the, the problem, anybody knows the Western Cape knows it is winters are miserable. You need to seal the outsides of your walls. And the skin plastic is also, um, it is also a waterproofing agent. It's agramont approved. And because of the fact that we use using this thin, um, thin bed mortar system and the skin plaster system, there's no need to have cement mixes on site. You can basically work out of the ba bags of the product and buckets and mix it on site. So there is your reduced carbon footprint during the construction process. The other consideration, and we actually didn't realize it at the time, um, again, I emphasize it, a lot of the components that we brought together with KBB, the KBB building system, we chose primarily because we wanted to reduce the cost of construction. But what was interesting is that we were finding out as we were going along, but hello, we are actually saving on waste as well. So there was a lot of spin-offs we didn't originally see when we, we put the system together that only later we, we realized the benefits that were additional to what we originally considered. For example, considerable reduced waste of uh, water consumption on site. Um, I was speaking to one of our project managers the other day. We finished a 83 square meter house in Ochimisa recently. And he said once the foundation had been cast and finished, he could have built the top structure, the walls, with a 200 liter drum of water. And conventional construction, that would just be impossible. We know how much water we have to use in conventional construction. <laughs> now I get on to the actual benefits that the homeowner would experience once the house is completed. Um, the wall system, the 140 brick KBB system, has excellent insulation properties. So the block itself, so the building envelope. We also make use of a product called Isolam uh, ceiling panels, which we use to do the ceiling. And that's also quite an interesting um, product in the sense that we chose the product to reduce the cost. Because literally within half a morning, you can finish a ceiling. We also use a double side and braid and shield roof covering underlay, which also reduces a lot of the um, transmission of heat into the building during the day and loss of heat during the night and winter conditions. And where we can, we make use of the installation of solar geysers. Um, what is also interesting about the ceiling panels we use is that it's expanded polystyrene and can be recycled in many, many ways. Our supply isolate as a policy, they will take back panels that are have been cut, that aren't used, and they will actually put it into their recycling. So as a supplier, they're also pushing towards um, reusing and not wasting. Just some pictures, you know, words, words don't tell much, pictures do. Uh, that's an example of the ceiling panel we are using. It's a double-sided rain and shield, which we are using. Um, here's an example of the cement slurry block grip, which is part of the thin bed mortar system that I was talking about. Blocks are literally dipped into the solution and packed in place. Um, and as I said, where we can, we, we will also install solar geysers. Um, it's not a very clear picture, but that's the SABS approved 3 millimeter skin plaster and also Agrimont approved. Um, what do the experts say? During 2009, uh, 2009, KBB took three awards in the 2009 International Innovative Housing and Sustainable Energy Efficiency Competition hosted by South Africa. The main sponsors were Absa Bank and also the NHBRC. The 
judges, when they decided at the end of the day who were the winners and who were the, uh, which building systems met all the criteria, um, they actually conducted scientific tests on the energy efficiency and the, um, the actual practicality and the, um, the sustainability of the building system. So it wasn't just checking the, how energy efficient the building system was, it was about social acceptance, it was about bankability, but I'll get on to the next slide about that. But the whole energy efficiency um, testing of the building system was carried out scientifically. We are also, the KBB system is also approved by the NHBRC. And we also meet the latest requirements of the energy efficiency criteria of the National Building Regulation, SANS 10400. Uh, South Africa have had quite recent updates and are pushing quite heavily on energy efficiency, which is part of the law. You have to do it. So the slight transition is very slow on this. Just, uh, just some pictures of the that we took of the two units we built in Wellington, South Africa, Western Cape, uh, which was part of the 2009 uh, competition. Uh, it's the Breaking New Grounds unit and the Affordable unit. Um, we had the opportunity to provide two uh, examples of KBB products, one for the uh, subsidy housing market, which is known as, used to be known as um, part of the Rural Development Program, RDP housing, which has now changed to breaking new grounds. And then the more up middle class income group would be the affordable unit. We are registered in South Africa. We have a Cape Town office which is registered with the NHBRC. Uh, we took first place at this competition in the breaking new grounds unit um, for in the recognition of achieving first place in the breaking new ground category for sustainable energy efficiency. But what was very interesting is that out of the some 18 developers that actually built the different innovative systems in Wellington, we heard afterwards that what impressed the judges with the breaking, the breaking grounds unit um, was we did not use any if I can call it energy saving gadgets, whether it be water or heating or cooling, the whole building envelope was designed to operate as an energy efficient component passively. Um, use of the ceiling, the ceiling system we used, um, the whole fenestration factors of the windows, they took into consideration of all the actual aspects of the building and en en envelope. A lot of competitors would come in, a lot of solar geysers and air conditioning type gadgets and heating gadgets. So they were quite impressed because at the end of the day, um, introducing systems to reduce energy usage costs money. And when you are trying to for a 85 to 110,000 housing market, it gets very expensive to add a lot of these components. So we tried to demonstrate the innovation and the way we could do it by designing a energy efficient building envelope as such. It's just an extract from the report which we got from uh, the organizers of the competition. Um, the overall rating which Kavango Block Brick achieved for engineering was an A, uh, architecture was an A, energy was a C, quantity surveying B, social acceptance C, and bankability B. So we were quite pleased with that. Um, although we also took, although I said we took first place for the energy efficiency uh, category of the breaking new grounds, we also took third place as well for um, the sustainability of the breaking new grounds unit and also third place for the sustainability of the affordable unit which we constructed. We've also had quite a lot of extensive exposure on the international front. Um, Kabango Block Brick represents Namibia as a member of the International Housing and Home Warranty Association. Uh, there's usually about two to three meetings per year. 
um, where members from all over the world get gathered together and discuss topics about housing and about home warranty um, programs to protect housing consumers. What was interesting is that um, during our visit to the um, London meeting in 2010, oh, sorry, 2013, uh, we had the opportunity to do various side tours and look at innovative systems and the way um, new new products that have been applied. I mean, uh, the UK, the guys are very, very far ahead. I mean, like I would imagine in most of Europe. And due to the cold climate, you can see, for example, in this corner slide top left, um, products that we were introduced to for the thermal installation. Um, this product, uh, picture I actually took because uh, Heinrich, who's sitting in the audience here, um, was just pointing out the importance of occupational health and safety for workers on site. How scaffolding poles are protected so that you don't lose an eye or injure yourself. Uh, we also had a site tour of the Olympic Village in Stratford. And this was actually a very interesting tour because uh, we were introduced to many different innovative systems that are being used, building components. Um, and as you can see in the photo, there's so much emphasis on um, health and safety. Um, in actual fact, I think a bit of an overkill. Safety goggles, gloves. Their building is basically complete, but that's the rule, the law. We were also commissioned by the NHBRC um, to build a unit for a deserving um, bedroom lady living in Nyanga East, uh, very near Cape Town International Airport. Um, the house was commissioned by the Department of Human Settlements and NHBRC approached us and said, guys, can you help and contribute and build a unit? It gave us incredible exposure to the Southern African or South African market. Um, it's just a picture of the front of the house here on the left. And uh, when they actually handed the house over to this lady that had been hospitalized and it was released and took um, ownership of the house, uh, the Deputy Minister of Human Settlements, uh, Zoe Cota Fedrix, um, handed the occupation certificate to Mr. Schroeder in his photo here. And uh, that was quite a quite a quite an emotional event for us, as um, a Namibian company. Um, as we want, we were talking the other day. Manufactured in Namibia, built in South Africa. It's usually the other way around. But basically, our experiences and what we can share. Many innovative components, elements, and materials designed to reduce the cost of construction more often than not are in line with the principles of reducing energy consumption and waste. And as I said earlier on in the presentation, is that our whole objective from day one, or our, our primary focus, was how can we build um, a sustainable housing unit dignified that people can afford. And we found that as we started using products to reduce the cost, we were finding that a lot of these products were also designed with the mindset of reducing energy consumption. We also have seen that when you are working with construction of uh, dignified houses and cost-effective or affordable housing, I don't like the word low-cost, but affordable housing, you need to also make sure that the structure is durable and you avoid remedial work. Um, we've seen, for example, a few years back, uh, the then Minister of Human Settlements, Tokyo Sekwali, he literally went into the Eastern Cape and bulldozed 3,000 houses. He said uh, the structures were, were very poor. Uh, there were cracks that people could put their hands through. I mean, was, you just couldn't expect people to live in those type of structures. So he put his foot down and bulldozed something like 3,000 houses. Those had to be rebuilt. And our policy is do it right from the start. Because if you do it right from the start, then you avoid high maintenance or remedial work, which in our mind as um, contractors would also reduce basically the carbon footprint. Because if you've done it right the first time, you have to redo it and utilize all those resources and energies twice. 
It's also very important to be open-minded to new ideas and innovative energy-saving concepts. There's a lot of systems and a lot of great innovative ideas that are coming onto the market. And it's important for... Okay. It's important also to... to um, be very open-minded and not get uh, distracted and give them a chance. We also found that the, the KVB system attracts innovative energy efficient building components. Because the system itself is innovative, we found that we were attracting a lot of um, industries approaching us saying, try these products, try those products. It's also very important to ensure that the components or systems that you, you are incorporating into your building system are um, approved by the various legal bodies like the NHBRC or the National Building Regulations. It's also important to collaborate and work towards common goals and objectives. In this industry, we tend to work in isolation from each other, whether it's um, energy saving components or whether it's construction or it's different innovative systems. Work together, let's share ideas. 